Sure. Now the latest on Cuba's fight for freedom. Just a short while ago, the U.S. Department of Treasury announced more sanctions against Cuba. They sanctioned the National Revolutionary Police, their director and deputy director for their actions in suppressing peaceful protests in Cuba that began July 11th. The Treasury Department went on to say they will continue to call out by name those who facilitate the Cuban regime's involvement in serious human rights abuses. President Joe Biden announced those sanctions while meeting with members of the Cuban-American community in this country. Among those invited to the White House are Yotuel Romero, the lead singer of a Cuban hip-hop group, Ana Sofia Alaez, the founder of the Miami Freedom Project, and former Miami Mayor Manny Diaz. Besides the sanctions, President Biden also talked about efforts to improve internet connectivity on the island. We're increasing direct support for the Cuban people by pursuing every option available to provide internet access, help the Cuban bypass, the Cuban people bypass the censorship that's being mandatorily imposed. You always know something's not going well when a country will not allow, uh, not allow their people to be engaged and be on the internet and being able to make their case known around the world. Now, the meeting comes weeks after Cuba saw the largest protests in decades on July 11th as thousands took to the streets to protest the regime on the island, as well as lack of food and medicine amid the devastating COVID-19 crisis.